In today's video, we're going to look at uh, Yamaha remote ID numbers. So this is a WXC50 here on the left. When you look at the literature, they show a stack of these. They have four of them in a uh, cabinet. And then there's an RN602, which has its own kind of remote. So the uh, this is the remote that you use on the WXC and WXA50s. And uh, out of the box, it's set to ID1. And the uh, RN602 is set to automatic. So there's uh, some issues with that. So uh, this one we can change. This remote here on the RN602 doesn't have any uh, numbered key areas and it and is only able to be set to ID 1 or automatic. So like you can't change the remote. And then the uh, receiver will either accept an ID 1 as a program setting or automatic as a setting. So uh, we'll change this remote ID over to number 2. So you hold the backward button and the 2 for 5 seconds. And you'll see on the uh, WXC it's going to blink as an error and then the other device turned off. So that's basically telling you you've got a, a error or misconfiguration on your remote. But that's okay. So we've got that part changed. Now we need to go into the advanced settings on this uh, receiver. So what you do is you hold in the return button, the little guy, and turn it on at the same time. So I'll just uh, turn it off here and uh, holding the return and turning it on. And it went into advanced setup. So, we're going to go to the remote ID, we're setting it to ID1. That's it. It's either automatic or ID1. So no, you can't put a stack of these things in a cabinet unless you have like remote wiring receivers for these things. But anyway, that's your options. So we're going to turn this off. Turn it on, and uh, we'll try this remote here and see what happens. It's not going to work. Just waiting for this net radio to come on. It's not even giving any error on this, it's just totally ignoring it. And then this guy is upset because it hasn't been configured yet. Now. So, there's a couple ways to change the WXC. So you can go into its web browser. So you can double click on here. It'll bring it up. You can control the device here for audio and whatnot. You can uh, go into the server and look for music and stuff. But anyway, we're going to settings too user interface go to ID2. Oh, another neat thing you can do is if you did have a stack of these things in here in your cabinet and you couldn't tell which one is which you click on this uh, device identification and it'll start blinking so you can identify which one it is that you're programming. But yeah, we set it to ID2 we're going to go to back and uh, now when I use this remote they're both ID2. So that was a, a success. The RN602, I'm going to it. Its web interface is quite poor. It's got some basic settings. You can't control it. You can do a firmware update off of a stick. That's about it. So uh, the other option would be to uh, go into the settings over here. 
RN602 really doesn't have much for any settings in here. You can go to information and you can look at a bit of stuff. That's about it. The WXC. You can go down to advanced settings. Which opens some other browser page. I'd, it's going to the same IP address, but it's uh, different. And you can go in and change the uh, user interface there. Or you can do the uh, device identification. Oh, it even tells you it's a noun. Good to know. So that's set up there. One thing people are always interested in is the quality of the audio that they're listening to. So we'll look at this 97.7 Hits FM as an example. When you go into this setting here and turn on audio information, it'll tell you the audio quality. Now go to K-Rock, take a look at it, and then there's the audio quality on there. So that's uh, kind of useful if you're trying to tune your ears to see what you're listening to. Um, that's pretty much it. So you're going to be looking for a back button and they can hold down the preset as a solution. On the RN602 you can't do anything with it. Some of the older devices, what you can do is just select like scene one, like you have a DVD player type remote, and just hold it for five seconds and it'll reconfigure your remote. But that, you could do that by accident at like any time. So you hold down the left cursor and hold scene one. So you shouldn't be able to do that unintentionally, but sometimes people do get remote mismatches and uh, you can figure out basically on the internet how to, to fix it. So hopefully you find that video informative, so thank you for watching.